Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Resonance Arcade. It is Wednesday night, and we are live. Hi. Do you like the inflection, then? Hello. You didn't hear it, did you? You weren't even listening to me. You were no, more I was concentrating. Too busy, I was too busy working up to my amazing... Yeah, your intro. It's all about yeah. you, isn't it? It all is. All about you. It's actually all about the fans. That's what it should be about, Lou. Yeah. Think about other people for once. Anyway, hello to everybody. Um, as those of you who have watched us before will know, this is a game, sh uh, game show. It's a talk show. We talk about games. Game news, game development, gaming industry, anything we anything we fancy. Uh, this week we do not have a guest and we also we thought we were going to have a full house today, but unfortunately Steve's internet is still... Uh, it's gone the way of the dinosaur, unfortunately. So now Sa Sam's got his cam and new new internet, so we're all uh, we're all good to go there. Um, but yes, anyway, th again to those of you who haven't seen us before, uh, we uh, do swear a little bit on this show. So if you're easily offended, then please turn off now. Let's go. Yeah, Might as well I just go like to say, I just like to say, if you if you're not following us on Twitter or Facebook, then please do go over to there, twittercom slash. Resonance Arcade, Facebook.com slash Resonance Arcade, and look at the picture that I just posted because it's brilliant. <laughs> yeah, we, we were having, uh, obviously, Steve was having some internet problems and uh, we captured a diamond moment of, of his. I'm sure he's uh, he loves the fact that we've done that. But yes, anyway. Um, so because we, <laughs> we don't have a guest, we'll basically just move straight on to games we've played this week. Um, Lou, as always, hasn't touched any games. Well, he's touched one. Yeah, I touched one with you. Yep, with me. We touched it mutually. We touched one. To, we, we touched one together. Yes, um, which was Farming Simulator. It was. No. Two thousand thirteen <laughs> specifically. It. All right, we we got it. We we thought we, we we sat down one night, me, Steve, and Lou, and we decided right, let's let's play a co-op game again together. And I don't know why it came up. I can't even remember <laughs> how we came to the conclusion that it was a good idea to play Farming Simulator. But we found uh, we found a really cheap version of it with all of the add-ons and everything for the the old version because I think we're on two twenty fifteen now, aren't we? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. So yeah, we got we got the twenty thirteen version, and we started we just got into it and just basically tried to figure out what the hell to do we didn't really read any of the tutorials or do any anything um you know i enjoyed it a little bit <laughs> and then, and you're then, saying that like it was something dirty that you about, did about about two hours into it i just went this is shit isn't it <laughs> this is utterly terrible it's... it must be really boring to be a farmer if that's what you have to do well i'm sure that it's not gripping but uh yeah, it was weirdly therapeutic. I, w I would would not go as far as to say that it's a good game by any stretch of the imagination, but it is compulsive to play. Like you have to finish the fields. You can't leave a field half done. I enjoyed it because I was playing with you guys again. It's another one of those. I think it was. I, I'm not. There's a bit of catharsis in there. There's a little bit of. Um, you know, I'm enjoying it just because it's it's something to do. But there are better games to play with your friends as well, you know. It's it's so cheap as well. I mean, yeah, what were, you were so chuffed, right? You're running around, you, you got you got an egg from a chicken, and you were running that to the farm to the to the farm shop with an egg in your hand, a single egg. You're running back and forth, picking an egg up, running to the farm shop about two miles away, and running back. And All I'm going to say right egg. is, I was getting fifty dollars per egg. Fifty dollars per egg. So it was worth hand delivering individual eggs to the house. Whereas I, I was desperately trying to figure out where to drop all the, all the grain off, or the what was the other one? The uh, uh, it was yeah, canola. Canola, because um, yeah. uh, yeah, there's a, an economy inside it, and you basically the, w different places around the map at different times of the day or different times of the month or whatever will give you different amounts of money for particular types of grain so it incentivizes you to move around the map and sell it in different places so i was driving around with this tractor up and down vertical um like hills with this this trailer on the back that was full of grain not dropping a single bit of grain it's, it's insane but I, I i'd like to play it again i think i think i would have a game I with you i don't guys. know if i would i, I kind of I i'm only know. saying that because i was enjoying it with you guys <laughs> We recorded it as well. We were going to split it up and put it on YouTube, but the problem is, is that I recorded it, and our cams, for some reason, I, I, I forgot to set Skype up properly, and our cams were kind of half showing on the uh, on the recording. I didn't think it was worth it yeah, in well, the end. It was funny, but uh, yeah, uh, 
Cool. I don't know what Thorne was on about a few episodes ago when he said that he loved these games. Did he? Did he actually say he liked Farms? Yeah, he Simulator? did. He was really excited about Farming Simulator 2015, wasn't he? Who was excited about that? Thorne. We had a guest on a while back. One uh, of our one of our real life friends from a LAN party we uh, met him many years ago. But yeah, I, I, there are some people who like Sims. Sims are big at the moment, aren't they? I, yeah, I mean, if anyone in chat has any Sim games or any any thoughts about Sim games, because there are quite a lot of them out there now. Pretty much all of them made by some German company, it seems. Yeah. Uh, or, or, or Truck Simulator th as well. There's a few in um, um, sw Swedish companies that I, I know. I would think Farming Sim... Uh, not Farming Simulator. Um, Goat Simulator. I think that's a Swedish company. Uh, yeah, but that's not really a simulator, is it? I'm not sure if it's a sim... It's a, it's a mock. I have <laughs> never seen a goat do any of those things. No. I'd just like to say hello to Beetle Bane uh, in chat. He's one of my, uh, one of my Twitter friends. Um, thank you very much for tweeting out. If uh, if you can get anyone here, that's uh, more than welcome. Yeah, so I, I played I played uh, Farming Simulator. I think even if you guys don't want to play it again, I might have a go on my own and see what it's like. I'll probably get oh, bored quickly nice. quickly though. I think. Is it uh, so? Just a like practical question: Is it first person, third person? Is it isometric? Yeah, you describe it. It sounds like it's three D, right? It's three D. It's third person, right? Essentially, we came into the game. And we we was we were set. There was loads of like farming equipment in front of us, and you're supposed to you basically get in a tractor, or there's a couple of different types of tractors you, you start off with, and you you have to reverse the tractor into an implement or drive the tractor into an implement forward, depending on which one it is, and then like you have to um, you have to harvest grain or whatever's on the uh, on the field, then you have to plow no you have to cultivate you have to cultivate it then you have to plow the plow field it. then you have to plant seeds then you have to wait for them to grow but the idea is is to plant seeds go and sell go and sell the produce and then get more and more money buy better farming equipment and eventually you can buy like gps driven um farming stuff and you can hire people to farm certain fields you start off with one field and then you you know the next field will cost you 10 grand the next one will cost you 100 grand or whatever something like that and you end up with the entire map and it's huge the map as well i can imagine once you've got it all you know you've got quite going in it quite a lot it's actually quite rewarding to come into your map and go i've got all these these fields producing corn or whatever well yeah it is it's first person or third person you can choose uh can you? Kind like Grand Theft, it's kind of like Grand Theft Auto sort of um, sort of mm. thing, isn't it? Really, you can't really that compare it view. to Grand Theft Auto. You can't. You're driving vehicles around, and you're going to crash them into people. <laughs> Sounds like Grand Theft Auto to me. <laughs> Farmers yeah. murdering prostitutes. That's basically what it is. Yeah. That's... Yeah. Can you if... can you run over people in the combine harvest and have their bits fly out no, the back end? No, but that was what we did try to do a, a number of times. We did we try did, and, yeah. uh, um, but but again, the physics aren't realistic in the slightest so it's not exactly a simulator if you drive a tractor into a farm hand that farm hand is going to explode isn't it he's not it's not gonna <laughs> <laughs> or if you drive a tractor explode. into another tractor Fact. you're gonna have to repair that tractor that isn't in 2013 so yeah there's no damage and if you, if you can't even tip the vehicle to so just spin around and then rewrite themselves yeah i said i was going up vertical hills li literally just just go flying up with them with with the with everything attached and didn't make any difference it's it's i think as, if you played it quite a lot you might get quite a, bo a bit of rewarding gameplay from it but as an initial starter we just we were just laughing our face off i was actually speaking to greg the other night and greg said that he said it, he sounded it, he'd, he'd have fun i think with us playing that well he's, he's he watches loads of videos of like, fa like tractors doing crazy like spins into the air and stuff so i think greg would just like to dick around in it yeah yeah it's um i, I I'll give it a go, another go if you guys want to. If you want to go with maybe, it, maybe, maybe. Um, I also <laughs> played Dungeon Keeper for the first time ever. The original, the or original Dungeon Keeper two. The original. Um, I've not played two either, so I don't know what <clears> the difference is. But um, the first one, well, the one I got, I got it ages ago. It came. F uh, Gog were doing it, like giving it away for free. When I think it was when the the you know the the free to play iPad version oh, came out, don't. which was horrific. Apparently, don't everyone mention complained that, about it. Sixty minutes to mine one block, and now, now I've played the original. I now understand the frustration of people who said, "I can't believe that they've done this to to Dungeon Keeper." I've only played two levels or three levels in it, um, and I really love it so far. It's a great game. I really isn't love it. it. it took, took me a while to get used to the view, though, because when you first start the game, I put it in nineteen twenty by ten eighty in DOSBox, and um, it's it's. Um, it's stuck really close to the screen. I didn't realise you could zoom out with end. And mm. try, when I tried to rebind my keys in DOSBox, it, um, it just 
uh, all the keys were mapping to really weird keys like left left um left arrow was l or something and right arrow was seven it was ridiculous so <laughs> i just left it on the keypad but i was enjoying it and i'm gonna i think i'm gonna keep playing it I'm... have you played it before sam no i've heard of it i've never played it before it's a fantastic game it's uh it's really well presented the voice acting is great it is yeah it's really good um and it's just it's just like it got such a nice polish to it well i mean it's i've i'm used i've tried a few different um emulation modes or, or graphics modes on dosbox and I you think can it's got a glide mode which is quite good i use the open gl um and i also try i tried the open gl no buffer but then you can also scale it with different scalers and there's a size scaler and uh uh, well, there's quite a few different types of scalers, but I tried a few and I've, I've got it so it, it looks okay. By the time I finished the first level or the second level and I'd figured quite a lot out, I had shit tons of minions. And when I figured out how to zoom out, I zoomed out right towards the end of the game by accident and the screen just ground to a halt. So <laughs> I'm, I might have to up the CPU cycles or something on it. If um, Potatoes mentioned War for the Overworld, which uh, I don't know if this is coincidence, but there is a new game out now, which is taking on the mantle of Dungeon Keeper. Yeah. Um, I've heard that it's quite buggy at the moment. That it's not very good, but it's, um, it's a kind of, uh, a throwback to Dungeon Keeper. It's it's a um, what's it? What do you, what do you call it? Um, and a, a dungeon keeper. <laughs> yeah, it's it's yeah. it's like a it, it's like a, a nod to it, I guess. <sighs> can I just move my cat? Hello. You don't have to show the cat. You can just <laughs> I know. Kick it. Yeah. <laughs> don't so, don't um, kick animals. I, so love animals. I was looking at it. I was actually looking at buying it, um, or at least checking it out, and I was told not to do that. Right. So, um, so what if you tell us why why you've asked that? Because if it's not in a great condition, then well, I think the reason he's mentioned it is because it's currently being uh, promoted on Steam, and obviously right. you mentioned Dungeon Keeper, and I guess people are wondering has what's kind of what, what's brought that on? Why why did you play Dungeon Keeper? Me? Yeah. Well, I fancied a new game, and I got some email from GOG for some reason. Oh no, no, actually, you know what it was. I've just bought this. Just bought a G GeForce 980. Nice. And I got um, The Witcher 3 free with it. And there was a key I got sent by Scan, where I bought it from, in the UK. Scan's a UK computer supplier. And um, I logged on to Scan and it said, redeem now to, uh, you know, get on your, add it to your Steam account. So I redeemed it and it took me to GOG and I had to log on to GOG and then I downloaded the GOG downloader and installed it and I, re I remembered that I had Dungeon Keeper so I downloaded right. that at the same time and played it immediately and I'm glad I did because again could probably going to get more hours out of this than a lot of games that I want, I've got to play these days. I'm not massively familiar with it I know of it it is like a game where you basically have to make your dungeon bigger and yeah um, you, have to, you have to mine for you have to basically mine blocks in order to get gold when you get the gold you can use that to build layer i've so far i've only i'm only on level two or three so i haven't got everything opened yet but you can build layers uh hatcheries layers are where your minions kind of reside when they're not doing anything i believe um hatcheries which is where you grow new minions or grow monsters potentially i haven't figured that out yet yeah uh, the hatchery is where you feed them training room which yeah, the training is rooms where you level them up no the hatcheries where it's little Hatcheries where you, you you feed them. It's got chickens in it. Oh right, is that what they are? Yeah. I thought they grew yes. into monsters. Oh no, right, right. The, mon the monsters actually come into your dungeon through the the entrances. So if you put something in, like if you put a library in, then warlocks start to enter the dungeon because they're oh. like the library. So you attract things based on what you build. Right. Okay. So does that mean that when like a monster comes into the dungeon, do you want to kill it or do you want to keep it there? Like no, you what? want to keep it. You're a dungeon keeper, so you're you're a, you're the bad guy. You're yeah, you're the. Yeah, yeah. That's monsters. one of the cool things about it because I, I played um, Overlord. Have you played that? It's a modern I kind know, of. I've seen you playing it, Chris. It's a third person. It's not a particularly well done game, I don't think, but it's really cool mechanics. You, you basically control your minions. You're this big Overlord dude. You're the you're the dungeon keeper essentially, but you're running around uh, on an overworld and the. Uh, you're following a story, but you control different types of minions. I can't remember what they do now, but again, I played Overlord 2, I think it was. 
kind of got it i got it really cheap with my 360 ages ago and i was really enjoying that as well but anyway the, the dungeon keeper you get heroes that come and attack your dungeon and they break through your walls but mm -hmm. the intent from so far I understand that you basically have to try and be careful about where you build your dungeon because if you break through into a, a someone else's dungeon their guys will start attacking you immediately yeah. and if you yeah. aren't ready for that then you're basically going to get wiped out. They'll start attacking and they'll start reclaiming your Ooh. dungeon as well. Thank you very much Tristan Hill, that's our first ever actual shore donation. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. We've, Thank uh, you. We've, we've had a few, um, a, a few charity donations previously. Um, I think we we raised about five pound twenty two during one of our our live uh, LAN <laughs> LAN shows, and plus we've got lose donation to do when we finish the Metal Gear Solid run through. But yes, thank you very much. That's uh, very much appreciated. That will go towards whatever we decide to do with the money. Go towards <laughs> trimming Chris's beards. Yes, probably, probably. Um, so yeah, uh, I, I'm, I'm enjoying that, and I'm going to keep playing it, and I'm probably Good. going to get Dungeon Keep to, Keeper two off what I've played so far as well, and play that through. Yeah, Dungeon Keeper Two is also a multiplayer. Like you can play properly with over TCP as well. So this is a IPX game, I believe. Yes, Dungeon it is. Keeper yeah, one. but, but you can. Dungeon you Keeper still... Two is um, TCP. So, well, so where where's the franchise up to? Because there wasn't there a recent one that was rubbish or something. Basically, was... both yeah, both Bullfrog made these games, and Bullfrog disappeared after it made some really good games. Syndicate Wars. Syndicate Wars. Um, yeah. yeah, Magic Carpet uh, and Dungeon Keeper being the main ones. Um, so there wasn't any follow up to it there was a few games which kind of did the same style of thing like um, that of Overlord or whatever it is and there's mm. been some other ones as well but nothing nothing's really captured it and then recently there was an iPad or um, a, a tablet mobile game which was called Dungeon Keeper which was free to play casual sort of thing and it was terrible it got uh, slated basically the, the 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 intention or the idea in dungeon keeper so uh, that i've figured out so far i'm no expert you you click a, a block and essentially a, a minion runs towards that block when it's next free there's some kind of queuing system or whatever and um it runs to that block and it mines it and it mines it within a few seconds but the way that they've done it in Dungeon Keeper is different types of blocks get, uh, the, the new one anyway, different types of um, blocks. We just had another donation from Minesweeper, and I assume that's, uh, I assume that's <laughs> um, uh, what Potato, and thank you very much for that, appreciated. Um, so yeah, we're there, the, you, you mine blocks, and the, uh, the, they take like 60 minutes, or some of them can take 24 hours, and you can pay for them to take like be, oh, be done it yeah course. that's why everybody started going crazy about the the ipad game i'm sure there's a lot of other things that you can pay for to speed things up you can probably buy minions and you know buy other resources and rooms i think and there was like the, that. didn't they issue a public apology saying that we were sorry that we basically shout on the franchise is that like know, a joel no. schumacher apologizing for batman robin it's like if i, <laughs> I have said so. anybody I'm it sorry. wasn't my intention i'm sorry for the yeah, nipples you, I think yeah, that they, exactly. they had a kind of committee meeting and decided that this was a game which was sufficiently like Awful. grounded in nostalgia <laughs> that they could bring it into the 21st oh, yeah. century and apply a casual gaming model to it and it just didn't work. It was, they made, it, they made me, it kind of clash of clans. I think the problem, I think the problem was, as far as I understood anyway, I think the problem with it is that, that the people who wanted to play Dungeon Keeper are people who have played the original. And if they pick up a casual game or a, or a mobile version of it, and they go, "Oh, this is going to be really cool. We can we can relive in HD all the old cool stuff we used to do in Dungeon Keeper and Dungeon Keeper Two, and it's if it just then starts going, give me your money in order to actually play the game, then uh, you know this yeah. has been done a million times already. But, but why couldn't they have at least done the same thing and maybe nicked all the ideas and everything and just call it like Dungeon Master? So that at least the original fans of the game wouldn't have not had their backs put out for no reason. Well, because, because they, were, they, were, they, were, they were actually building on the fact that there was already some nostalgia there. I think they, they mined an audience, which was a very dangerous audience to mine. They mined an audience of hardcore old school PC gamers and gave them this shitty tablet casual game which paid a win. Mm. And People like that are not going to be into it. Then, yeah. Into it was the, a the bad call. Win. It oh, was a really yeah. bad call. So Sam, you've played a few, and, and yeah. a few that I actually want to play as well. That um, uh, well, we talked a little bit about Hotline Miami two last week, and I've only played a little bit more of that. 
So I haven't got much to say about it, other than the fact that um, there seems to be a lot more focus on guns in the second one, I'm noticing, which actually does distract slightly from the sort of flowing combat that the first one had, because I find that I have to plan attacks, then stop, and then plan another attack, whereas in the first game I found that I could link it together a bit more fluidly. Now, it could be that I'm just not very good, maybe, but it feels like there's a lot more gunplay when it used to be a lot more melee in the first one. Mm-hmm. There's lots of glass for them to shoot you through and stuff like that, which was reserved for the last couple of levels of the first game. So it's good and all that, but it, it's different. I'm not sure if I'm enjoying it being that much different or if it's frustrating to me now. I've played it a bit and put it down again because I was playing these other two games that I'm going to talk about more. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm game- still interested yeah. in playing it. I definitely want to get on it. it- I like the first one enough to to pay for it. I just again haven't had time recently. I'm, I'm finding the story to it really, really intriguing and really confusing, but in a, in, a, in a sort of ooh, tell me more kind of way, not a this is shit kind of way. It's but I totally <laughs> found that about the first one. I was totally confused all the way through. I was like, what is this guy crazy or is he getting actual? Uh, what's going on? I, I don't there's, get it. There's a lot of people who seem to be crazy in Hollow Knight yeah. too. Hmm. <laughs> Every single human being that features in the game is pretty much a nutter. Because you've played it as well, haven't you, <laughs> Lou? You got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm quite a bit into it now. Um, it's all gone slightly kind of Vietnamish, although it's not set in Vietnam. It's in uh, Hawaii or somewhere like that. Haiti, right. Haiti, uh, Miami. Maybe, yeah. It's, it's somewhere near Miami, but yeah, it's uh I, I think I agree Sorry. with Sam. It kind of feels like you, you're carrying on from the end of the last game. Um, in the, it's it's introducing things very early on that were in the end of the game, like the windows and stuff like that. There's just enough new stuff in it to keep it interesting, but maybe because it's not such a new experience, and as Sam says, the flow seems to be missing because you're not melee orientated as much anymore. I can't say whether it's a, a worse game. See, it's just... you're both saying the same thing there. You both can't decide if you like it or not, basically. It's enjoyable, but I'm not... You know, sometimes when a sequel <laughs> comes out and you go, this game's clearly superior to the first one or clearly inferior, yeah. it's different enough. It doesn't have but to be first... better, though. No, it doesn't have to be better, but it's... I like the fact that they're not just doing the exact same game again. But I think I need to complete... I think, I think it's one of those games that I need to finish it, go, right, got to the last level, completed it, now I can assess how I feel about it, rather mm. than make a judgment on it at this stage whereas some games you can be playing for 10 minutes and be like I'm loving this and I think I'm going to love it for the rest of the game if it gets bold for you later on down the line it's different but um, yeah but that's going to segue me into talking about Ground Zeroes which I know only you've played out of us lot here and yeah. I'll tell you the reason I bought it because the bone of contention for me on this one was the price that they paid you were expected to pay over 20 quid if you wanted to get the PS4 version but what is, you know, essentially a demo that would have been chucked in with... How much have you played? Another game. Um, I've played all of the Ground Zeroes mission, and I've played, like, two of the side missions. I haven't played all of them. Right. Now, spoiler alert for those of those of you who have not played Ground Zeroes. Um, turn off now, or, or la di la la We'll put our finger up, because, to me, this would piss me off if I, <laughs> uh, if I was... So, there's a bit in Ground Zeroes where there's a reveal right at the end of the mission where um, you get a well-known face. One of the the agent that you get is a well-known face. Have you done that? Yeah. yeah. So you know that's, that that was the moment that I've been referring to, like, that I was like, that was proper fanboy spuff moment. It was. It really was. And d- what do you think of, about that? And that's I, th- strange, but I, I don't... Go on. <laughs> sorry, I got... A, sorry, I had a bit of a weird sound cut-out thing there. I wasn't sure oh. if I was talking over you. Um... It was very fanboyish, but I'd already had that spoiled for me. I think I'd seen Aww. that on, a, on something somewhere. I was like, oh, well, I kind of knew it was coming. Okay, but, right. Yeah. That's it. It's enough. Spoiler over then. But the reason I bought it is because there was I got a, a little email through saying there's a sale, an Easter sale on the PlayStation Network, 75% off certain titles. Metal Gear Solid Ground Zero is one of them. So it cost me £5.79. And oh. I was like, right, that's a fair price for the content on that. Like there for, the, all... for, the, for the couple of hours that's there, it's absolutely... A fantastic little bit of game but it's not worth paying 25 quid for they were always going to do that though they were always going to bring it out yeah. at, so they do the same with games in every genre and every release every triple a release they bring games out at 60 70 quid and then they drop them down to 30 and then they drop them down to 20 and then they end up in a sale for five quid eventually unless mm-hmm. they are particularly well 
you know received games and then they always retain a a, a rrp price of like 30 40 quid you know um i'd say one thing that i really like about it that's it's a significant change from other metal gear solid games that lou you now have an understanding of because you've watched chris fumble his way through <laughs> yeah. your face <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's, it's how smooth everything feels in comparison to other games. Like in the other games, there was like a stand, a crouch, uh, this uh, against the wall, not against the wall. Whereas in this one, it's they've actually um, taken a little bit of, of the more sort of um, the naughty dog approach of having the animations blend together a little bit more. So you go up to a wall and it <laughs> into it, and the, the, the way you go from crouch to crawl to, to whatever, it's all very very smooth, and it feels a lot more intuitive than it used to. Even things like the weapon aiming feel a lot smoother than they used to, um, and I kind of really like that. I hope I, I, I hope that in the full game that gives us a lot more avenues to make a more Did interesting it, stealth game. But what my one criticism of the game, uh, and I said this I think when it came out, is that it feels buggy. It feels unfinished. The the movement doesn't feel good enough um, to me yet. Anyway, it feels maybe a bit flaky. I don't know, maybe a bit um, loose. That's probably a better way to describe it. There's a couple of there's a couple of bits that need ironing out. Like yeah, the um, when you go up to a, an object and you know Snake will like stealth against it, which is fine. Uh, he'll only do that in a crouched position and not in a stood up position. So mm. you go up to say a low a low wall and you want to then stand up and aim over it. He won't do that. You have to make him stand up and then. It's, so there's some little buggy bit. I know what you mean. There's some little buggy bits like that, but it is a demo. I mean, it's not. Yeah, the final, yeah. but it's, it's like a, it's a prologue, I guess you would call it. But um, I, I don't know anybody who might have been on the fence. I don't know if the sale's still on uh, whatever network. I don't know if it's on Xbox One or whatever. Um, but I, you know, for five pounds seventy, you really, really cannot go wrong with that. I, it's I really think cool. Ground Zeroes is out on PC as well. So if, I'm not sure if it's come out yet. Actually, I, I know that it's going to if it hasn't, uh, mm. and I know that Phantom Pain is definitely coming out on PC. I am very, very close to deciding to get it on PC instead of my PS4. And I've, I've literally got no games on my PS4. I got it for that game because I thought it was going to be an exclusive. And it's not. It's going to be it's like not. two weeks and then the, it's out on the PC unless there's a GTA Five type delay going on. On the PC version, will it allow you to play with mouse and keyboard? And yeah. Would you play with mouse and keyboard? 100%, definitely. I, I said to, um, a while back, if you remember, I said that I preferred playing third-person games with the control pad. But you've always played Metal Gear Solid with the pads. Yeah. I have, but I don't like it. I don't like the mm. fact that, um, well, I don't like that. Well, I can't remember what game I was playing recently. It was probably uh, something like Diablo. No, not Diablo. That's not even third person, really, is it? That's a isometric type thing. Um, there was a game I was playing that was third person, but I played it on, on a console, and then I thought, oh, I'll give it a go on PC because that's on a sale and, you know, that's a fair price. Grabbed it, had a go, and I was like, this is awesome. Being able to control the camera with my mouse. It's, it's miles mm. better. Why Why have I never wanted to do this before? Or, you know, why have I always preferred a pad? Why have I always said third-person games are better with a pad? They're not. They're still not. Mouse and keyboard is still a superior <laughs> way to play a game in my in my experience. And I, and I would definitely go for mouse and keyboard. 100%. Fair shout, then. Well, I'd go for it if that's what it comes out. Do it. Yeah. So... Uh, that's yeah, uh, cool. that, that is again that is news with with we're getting Metal Gear Solid for soon, aren't we? It's it's been announced September, is it? Five, uh, it's sorry. been they've changed, they've faffed it around loads. So they've gone from September this year to early 2016 and and Have back they? again. It's changed like about four times in the past couple of months. Because Kojima doesn't know what he's doing it. at the moment. Because he's he's the, he's leaving Konami apparently. Yeah, I know. he's actually leaving this time. I think there's there's quite a lot of industry stuff going around about it. I haven't really been following it that much, but I love it if there was a press conference and he was like, "I am leaving this time for realsies," and everyone was like, oh, "Realsies, <laughs> <laughs> double, no jokes, double double like, realsies." Well, because, because he's so like he's so well known, especially among Metal Gear fans, for just his like bait and switch, like bullshit approach to uh, promotion, which is to be going like, "Right, you're going to do this in the game. Actually, it's this. He's going to go going right. I'm going this direction. I'm actually going this direction." That no one could take him seriously yeah. when he's actually left and got out the door and he's got his P60 or whatever they have in Japan <laughs> and then I'll believe it <laughs> yeah I think uh, he's, he's probably going to um, he's probably going to do s something weird again there's going to be some other change but I, I reckon he's probably actually David Hater in real life he doesn't exist, he's not a real person I'm I don't know like, what go on. Go on, Lou. 
I, I reckon when he leaves the building, then everything will stop, and you have to pull the plug the, the plug out of the controller pad. <laughs> in the two, it 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 appear yeah. back in the. Building. I was going to try and s s fit that in, but it didn't work. Yeah, I'm. Yeah. Uh, I'm still looking forward to that, and I hope this. The, the, no, you know what? I don't care. I still don't care as long as I get a good game. I, d I don't care when it comes out as long as I get a good game. Yeah, I don't mind if they, if they delay it to make it awesome. I'm f I'm totally fine with it. I always come back to Arkham Asylum when I think about that and how that game was delayed for about nine months. And when I first saw screenshots of that, I was like, this game could be good, but it could be just another crappy like Batman game. And Batman's had an up and down history game. Some of his games have been cool, some of them have been shite. That one came out and was, was the best. And it was delayed to make it the best as far as I can tell so when someone says they're delaying the game I don't get upset about it in fact as we've already discussed I'd rather they delay it make it good than rush it to meet a deadline that nobody cares about this These Christmas days. deadline for all the games it's like I just pick it up in January I mean I know little kids and that want it for Christmas but I don't give a shit yeah, but that's, when, I, when, I, when it's ready, you know? But unfortunately, mass marketing, that's what it's about. It's about selling as many games as you possibly can. And that's why they have to keep hitting these deadlines, regardless even, of what they think. Even if the faces don't work, like in Assassin's Creed Unity, like, come on. Absolute joke. I haven't anyway, played Unity, and I, and I won't I just, play Unity. I've seen enough of the little screenshots and videos of the ridiculous bugs to think, well, I'm not... Well, I'm, you, you know, know what? I'm not surprised. I haven't heard much about Unity because I, I said after 4, that was... It. I said after 3, I wasn't, but then 4 was actually quite good in comparison to the rest of them. Uh, but Unity, yeah. I haven't even paid attention to it. Not interested in Rogue, not interested in anything that... Uh, fuck off, Ubisoft. Just fuck off. <laughs> I've fucking had enough of you. Right, enough. Yeah, take that, Ubisoft. Now, the next game that you've played, I'm really interested in playing, and I want to know what your opinion is, because I know you've played the uh, yeah. precursors. Uh, okay, so if I was to speak to it, because there's two different ways to talk about this game. One is for people who've never played a Souls game before, and one is people who have. Because it's very different, it might appeal to people who haven't played, and but certain people who have played might not like it, because in the Souls games, you had... Um, quite an open way to go about your combat if you want to build your character you could have builds of characters that was like strength builds you know you could have your tank builds you wear loads of heavy armor and just go in take the hits and just whack it with an axe until it dies you could have the build where it's magic and you've got to then time your attacks from far back with magic spells which is kind of the boring way to play or you've got like the elite way to play which is to not really have much defense but getting close dodge the enemy's attacks time yours learn its attack patterns and then get your digs in and do your parries and stuff so this game is going for that that gameplay of the, of the parries and the, the quick attacks and the dodges is kind of the gameplay. There's a shield that I found in it that's absolutely useless and crap, and it's kind so, of almost there as a joke. Just to be clear, we're talking about Bloodborne, by the way, because I, I, I left it up I, for I totally, Sam to say, but he hasn't totally actually said it over what I knew what I was going to talk about. I forgot, yeah, Bloodborne on the PlayStation 4 <laughs> um, is the spiritual successor to Dark Souls. How pretty as, is it? I know that's it's, a stupid question for someone like people like us, but how pretty bastard. is it? It's very, it's very, very pretty. It's not, it's not like, you know, you might see like a game with like the dice engine and that has that sort of fo almost photorealistic look. It hasn't got that, but it's got very, very nice design, textures, lighting, all that kind of stuff. It's one of those games actually that looks better in motion. Than it does in screenshots. Uh, you know, that kind of thing that I mean, where screenshot looks okay, but when you see it in motion and you're controlling it, it feels very nice to fire. There's lots of fire in it. Um, you know, there's like people with with stakes who are like, "Oi!" Like they're actually like cockney. <laughs> 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 they are they're like, "Doi!" <laughs> Trying to stab you like that. Um, they've got like pitchforks and flaming torches and stuff. And there's loads of uh, uh, beasts and people that have been roasted on, um, you know, stakes and stuff, just potted around the, the town. And it, it's uh, so if you've not seen anything of it, it's um, it's set in a sort of 17th, no, sorry, an 18th, 19th century fantasy gothic rundown city with some sort of plague infection that's making people go mad and a bunch of hunters go out and kill the people that are infected that i think it's implied i've not really played far enough that they turn in they get more monstrous the more infected they get like they get more there's a couple of werewolves in it that i've encountered and then um, other weird beastly things and all that kind of stuff cool yeah, it's it's very very good. Um, is it, it is it like, as difficult as the other games then? I was going to ask something. Like yes, it. it's it is, but it's not at the same time. Like, I remember you, Lou, you said that you had trouble because the way that you had to you had to jump across a gap in it. Is it in Dark Souls One or Dark two? Souls Two? The very, yeah, the, 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 yeah, you got to jump across a gap as part of the tutorial, and I fell yeah, off there's... it seven times and quit the game and uninstalled it. <laughs> so, 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 so such little patience. 
<laughs> seven times wow. in the tutorial. Dying seven times in the tutorial, Chris. Wow, I can't believe you died seven times. I ain't that hard. <laughs> <laughs> Just run and press, oh, jump, press your run in. Yeah, but I was running, and because it was an analog stick, I was running off to the side. I kept jumping off the side. I couldn't run in a straight line. I would always well, snake. It's worth bringing up as well that you can change it. You can, you can change how that controls. Anyway, but there's not as much of that. There's not, um, there's not weird... Um, What's the word I'm looking for? There's not weird platformy stuff in this one so far. It's more. It is a lot of exploration, and there's bits where you can, you know, drop down onto onto different areas and stuff, and you can fall off and die in certain bits. But there's there's not as many precarious ledges, and some of the precarious ledge bits in Dark Souls One, like there's a really famous bit where you've got to go up, um, uh, like a really really thin bit of I don't know what you call it, like a, a ballast to a building, and there's these yeah. du few dudes with huge arrows firing at you, and if one hits you, you fall off, even if you defend it, so you've got to run up a little thing like this wide, and then roll and dodge as you go in, and then I try and kill to... the dudes at the top, and it's like, it's so unforgiving. I just want to make clear that, that, like that. that I don't really have a problem with movement in games, I've never been one of the people who, who mourns at levels with lava in it, or pits, or things you can fall off, I'm normally pretty good at controlling games, but it seems to me that one of the, like 50% to 80% of the difficulty of the, the Souls games has been the control method, which is really weirdly sensitive and awkward. It, it, it feels awkward when you first try it, but it's it's got it's it's a system that you have to get good at in order to beat the game. Like it, it it's, what I like about the games is that they require you to become good at the game. Mm. If it, you, you can you can mine and uh, again, like I said before, tank your character up, wear loads of heavy armor, and just go in and see if you can take the hits and smash the other guy before they smash you. You can kind of do that, but the games or have always pushed you into being a skillful player. That in order to defeat a boss, you have to learn its attacks. Mm. learn what the patterns are and then get in your hits when it's appropriate to do so rather than just run in and try and go ah and try and just beat it quickly yeah um, but that, having said that this game is more focused it's slightly more focused towards making that judgment between retreating and attacking again because when you get hit in this game your health goes say you've got a health bar the health goes down but it stays orange and if you attack your opponent back quickly enough you can regain a portion of the health that they took off you mm. now that's now that's a that gives you like, what are you going to use the tactic of? Well, I'll just pull back and see if I've got any health items, or am I going to go in again? But if it's a new in enemy that you haven't encountered before and you don't know its attack pattern yet, that really is like a decision that you kind of don't want to make a lot of the time. You're like, ah, <laughs> I want to hit you and get my health back, but what if you do another attack and then do another attack and then you're dead and you've got a respawn? I, I like, love that. That is a beautiful mechanic that makes it mechanic. forces you to attack back. Yeah, or it doesn't yeah. force you, but it it puts you in a position where you can't just kind of hang back and be a wuss yeah because again what what the dark souls and demon souls were very much about waiting for your enemy to attack picking them off and then pulling them into an area and then attacking them and chipping them down and doing it that way it was kind of like you did that move on to the next enemy and that's fine but this game they're clearly pushing you to be more proactive mm. and no one i, I don't good say thing. this to make it put put you off but it's a little bit more like a devil may cry in the sense that you want you kind of want to get the encounters out of the way more quickly this time um mm. not because it's fast and, and twatty like devil may cry but it has <laughs> that it's like an incentive to to get the job done more quickly especially when more enemies as you fight in an area of lots of enemies more enemies will then start to take notice of you and come and join the fray so you kind of want to get the each enemy that you encounter get them down and dead really quickly Mm. Uh, it sounds yeah, like it's a bit more beautiful as well. It sounds like it's a bit more action based than. Uh, well, they're always they've games. always been action RPGs. They are basically you wander around an environment and kill everything that you encounter. It's still like that. They've always been very action based with very heavy, weighty, um, sort of chunky feeling combat has always been what's made them really enjoyable. And this one has that as well, except you've not got armor and a shield now. You've kind of got more speed and agility. But you're not that fast. Does that make sense? Like you can do quick steps and rolls, but you're not exactly a fast Dante-like character. You're quite stuck to the ground and weighted to the ground at the same time. So it still has that sense of weight and heft to the attacks, which not a lot of games with uh, swords and stuff in really have managed to pull off as well as these games. Yeah, you what don't... I like about them is that you feel the weight. Like when he does that, it feels heavy, and you go doosh, and it hits, and it like has the good 
feel to it That's yeah we, we've we've commented before on games uh quite a lot of games especially first person games that have melee it doesn't feel like you're actually connecting with people it feels mm -hmm. like you're you know, it, it takes, a, well, most of the time you're not. Most of the time you hit a bounding box and then you bounce off them. You're not actually connecting with the, the model in any way because it's too expensive to calculate a lot of the time by the developers. So, Yeah. But no, that's, again, that sounds good. That's one that's on my, my wish list, but it's not that important to me, if you know what I mean. I want to yeah. don't mind getting it. It is a PS4 exclusive as well, isn't it, at the moment? It is, yeah, and I think it's going to stay that way, the same way that Demon Souls was. But they're, they're pushing it now as... Uh, as a, a bit of a, in a weird way they're making it a console shifter like they're sort of going this is that that sort of weird uh, game that is actually might be a bit of a hit for the playstation even though it's actually quite hardcore because they had the order 1886 came out which as i predicted ended up being rubbish um but you know one of the most beautiful looking games ever made but is crap what a waste of what a waste of such a beautiful aesthetic yeah yeah no, i and really like quite the look a, of it quite a lot of good ideas in it as well it's just i uh, QTE werewolves, anybody? <laughs> QTE werewolves and basically a film. What, what's the point, you know? I, I'm saying that as a Metal Gear Solid fan as well, but, you know, come on. Come on, guys. Yeah. We don't want to play films. We want to play computer games. We want to watch films. It's not the bloody, um, pan what was it, Sony CD or whatever it was called, the... Oh, the Mega CD? CDI, yeah, the Mega CDI. CDI, CDI the pa it was Panasonic. Philips, wasn't it? Oh, Panasonic. Philips CDI, yeah, yeah sorry, the, the yeah. Panasonic CD. Yeah. Else. I remember playing that in a shop a few times and and it just basically being an interactive. I think I played Dragon's Lair on that actually. That is an interactive movie. Yeah, yeah, uh, but yeah. It's QTEs basically, that's all, yeah. Yeah. Um right, so if we have finished talking about games, we shall move on to our next section which is uh, our favorite section of the of the show. It is the way of the exploding fist list. Right <laughs> <laughs> out loud. <laughs> I'm not even going to bother doing a dust. <laughs> I'm no, not going to bother. Because I, I messed it up. Yes. So this section of the show is where we have a, a brief 15-minute um, ramble about a list of something computer game-based. Obviously, every show on the planet has some kind of list. Every magazine on the planet has some kind of list. Everybody loves a good list. Uh, we used to actually do entire shows about them. but uh, Top we, 10 lists. Yeah, top 10 lists of lists. That's very meta. Yeah. I can't think of actually what that means. My head's, no. my head's, my head's <laughs> screwed. Um, so what we ask is if anybody in the audience has a list uh, that they would like to impose upon us to talk about, um, favourite protagonists, favourite uh, levels in games, most cinematic moments, um, anything like that, that that you 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 think so if it sounds good we'll t we'll have a talk about it. I have one in my list at the moment. I don't know if Lou or Sam you have any... Uh, I always I try today. and have one and I haven't... You're haven't rubbish. I, it's always I me. Well, I'm not even trying now. Uh, th this one is utterly terrible. That's why we don't do it, because you don't have to try. What? I think the more terrible the idea, the better in a lot of ways. Well, um... <laughs> Unless someone's got one in the chat. It's usually... The ones they give us in chat are usually good. I'm going to have to rephrase this, actually, because it doesn't really make sense as a list. Um, I'll tell you what, I'll put it out there. See if anyone in chat has anything first now. No, there's nothing coming in. Games with QTEs. There you go, there's one. Um, most distance travelled in a game. Now, that isn't really a list, so we need to figure out a way of making that into a list. Okay. Is that your idea? Game, games, yeah, this is my idea. The games where you travel the most. Uh, elite? Clearly. <laughs> yeah! No, that... that <laughs> That guy, that the, the one percent or whatever he's called, that who did the ten million star systems or something yeah. ridiculous. Yeah, a pretty far distance. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I mean, I've got to put Skyrim in there because I've played so many hours of it and walked so many hours of that. I'm yes. going to say, it, and it, because it was the thing, there was a thing that stopped me playing it. But Fez, the amount of backtracking in Fez, oh, got good call. My tits. <laughs> Interesting. It was so so many times when it was like, oh god, I've got to go through about eight screens finding the right door, trying to remember all the doors that I hadn't been through and the doors I had been. I through. actually stopped playing it because of oh, yeah. that. I never yeah, actually got through the well. first door. I know there's a few doors, isn't there? But I didn't get through the first door because I had to do that so much. It was a lovely looking game. I actually really liked the mechanics and I liked the ideas. But the, yeah, the fact that you had to go into a world 
and then come out of that world and then go and find a piece in another world and if you missed something it wasn't obvious yeah and i know it's it's a bit whingy of a computer game but at the same time i do need some hand holding you know it was a very, it was a very lazy design i think i don't didn't like the um I, I thought fez was beautiful it was a good idea but the 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 backtracking stuff really screwed it over there's some really interesting ideas in the um in chat as well by the way i'm just um just so everybody's aware because you're now coming up with some ideas i'm going to put them in my list and we might talk about them in another show this is yes this is today's um this is today's subject now i'm afraid you were too yeah, late stuck with it it's got to be Skyrim's got to be in there, but um, surely Grand Theft Auto. When you get into going back and forth across the map, well, you even get stats in GTA as well, don't you? You these do, days? yeah. It tells you, do. you how many how many kilometers or miles you've. Tra it'll be miles, won't it, that you've travelled? Yes, driven, flown, travelled by boat, walked, cycled, whatever. So yeah, well, actually, there's a, there's a quick question. What about in GTA then? What did you do the most on your stats, if you can remember? Did you fly? Drive. Obviously Try. not boat. Nobody ever went in the boats, ever. <laughs> Only for a mission that you had to. We're like, when can I get off this fucking boat mission? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> always, occasionally, always. Occasionally I'd, uh, I'd get in a boat and I'd be like, this is pretty shit. So I'd get out and swim to the shore because I was so annoyed by the control system. The very, the very coolest people will have flown the Dodo in GTA... Was it Vice City? Or oh, was it? Uh, Grand Theft Auto 3. 3, yeah. it was 3 actually, yeah, wasn't it? The, um, the plane that wouldn't fly. But people yeah. somehow managed to fly. Oh, right, yeah, I remember that. The clipped wing yeah. plane, yeah, yeah. Some yeah. people managed to get like serious airtime in that. Um, I uh, mine is easily travelled by motorbike. I yes, I love the motorbikes the most. Yeah, I did a lot and of then, motorbike And then and then after that, it would have been walking probably. No, maybe cars. I don't know. Travelled travelled in four wheeled vehicles or whatever it was. Yeah, cars definitely. It's the it's the basic default mode of the game is to be driving a car. I travelled a long way in EverQuest. I actually used to walk. Um, when, I, when I was playing EverQuest, not long after I started playing, or, or like about a year or so after I started playing, they introduced um, teleportation, so that you could just literally just teleport um, by clicking on a, a scroll to go to the plane of something or other, and that could fast travel you to the different cities. But before that, I used to love walking between the cities, and it was a journey. Like, yeah, it yeah. would take... It took an hour and a half to walk between, from one side of the continent to the other, which doesn't sound like a lot, but actually in game time and how dangerous I, it was. Yeah, it was very dangerous. Was that was brilliant. the problem. I remember sticking to the right outside of the map quite a lot. There was one, there was a forest area when you got out of uh, Kainos. Yes, yeah. It was, when, um, if you got out of Kainos and then you went straight forward and it was on the, on the right-hand side at the end, past a couple of orc camps, and then you went into a forest and that was quite a high-level area for starting players. Um, and you, you just basically stuck to the right-hand side and you could use that to get to possibly where the barbarians started, maybe, if I remember Kainos. rightly. I, I don't think it was a forest. You went you went to Halas from Kainos and you went through the ice, well, when icy area. When you came out of Kainos, you could go straight forward and left through the tunnel and that took you to some desert area. No, you're thinking of Freeport here. Yeah. Am I? Yes, you are. Oh, There's no believe. desert near Kainos. Oh no! Sorry, <clears throat> sorry. Got excited then. Uh, Kainos is where you come out and you're you're in like a, an open green area, and that's where Sergeant Slate yeah. is, isn't Hills. it? No, that's where that's not where Sergeant Slate is. Oh, Sergeant so Slate is in in the East Common Lands, which is outside Freeport. But anyway, yes, I, I was a lot of walking, and it was really enjoyable to walk in these games. Um, I played um, Dark Age of Camelot as well, and I used to like walking in that. I think there's something really satisfying about walking through massively multiplayer games. Well, that there's one, World of Warcraft. I definitely did a lot of walking in that. Didn't do much in that because I didn't play it that long. I thought you did. I thought you played I not it really, no. I played, played a lot of the beta, but not much when it came out. Come on, Sam. You must have walked I, I a was, lot. I was thinking about different ways of transport that you've got to cover a lot of distance without think about it. Racing games. Anybody who's, <laughs> who's had a really... I've not played this game much, but anybody who's put in time on a Gran Turismo must have gone thousands and Especially thousands of miles. Especially if you do any of the NASCAR ones as well. Like, oh, honestly, God. hours and hours just going round in a fucking circle. Oh, God. And then yeah. occasionally you'd, you'd start falling asleep and you'd end up crashing and you'd have to start again. <laughs> if, there's any, if there's any Americans who are into NASCAR or anybody who's into NASCAR, why are you why? into that? What is, what going is... fast in a circle for hours. I mean, I you know, know what, what the idea is you get pissed. But you can do that at any boring sport. But you know like, the thing is, I, I, have, I have the same thing with uh, Formula One, though I'm not particularly into Formula One because it is just cars going round. But at yeah. least there's, 
Yeah. <laughs> but it's like it's like people got five hours. It's like people going to the races. It's a day to go and get pissed. That's what it is. It's not necessarily that they're into it that I mean there's some people that are into it, obviously, but you know, but you're wrong. You shouldn't be. <laughs> you're not allowed to like it because I find it boring, so stop yeah. liking it. Um so yeah, racing games long longest time traveled looking up a horse's bum, Red Dead Redemption probably. <laughs> but because how you spend so much time going around on horses in that game, but always you always want that horse there. There are like. some games though that, that I don't like fast traveling in, like in uh, Oblivion, Skyrim, Red Dead Redemption. The scenery and the, the world is so interesting that I didn't want to fast travel because I felt like I'd be missing something. The random events that occur in Skyrim and Red Dead Redemption in particular, they were really, really cool. Did, have you played Red Dead yet, Lou? Yeah, I did. I played it for a bit on the Xbox before I sold it. Oh, idiot. <laughs> it's awesome. It is an is awesome that not, game. I still haven't played the zombie with, thing. The zombie. Again, I, I, I got oh, yeah. a bit frustrated with the control of the horse. I just ah, see the, the horse. Pad. The horse control is a bit weirdly unintuitive until it just clicks with you. Because I had that same thing of playing it and thinking, I don't really get how this. Why is this horse not doing what I want it to? But then after a bit, it just sort of it just sort of clicked, and I was like, I get how the horses work now. And then once I had that, I found the horses to be actually some of the best horse controls that I've ever done in the game. Yeah. That's just me. Well, the thing that I always have to think when I'm controlling the horse that it, you know you're not meant to be directly controlling the horse. You are telling the horse what you want to do, and then the horse is deciding to do it. So it makes sense from that point of view in that you do this and the horse does this, and you think, "Why the hell did you do that?" It's because it's a horse. I really like way. the controls in in Red Dead. I found I that it. as a third person game, I I found that really cool. The camera it was, was used, nice. The... It was using a mouse. Uh, sorry, it was, it was not being able to use a mouse again. It was just uh, uh, control pads. Oh, you, you know, should see. Every time right. I use them, I get worse at them. When we were playing Gears of War together, he was he was literally doing this running around, staring at the ceiling thing for <laughs> ages. Right. It was so the, funny. Was so I think funny. I watched a couple episodes of you guys playing that, and at the start, it was just like, <laughs> so, "What look, the hell is going Lou, on?" Lou's voice just went an octave higher every ten <laughs> minutes. He was just going, "What? What? 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 God, and it, yeah, brilliant! Love it." <clears throat> um, yeah. So, uh, distance travelled. In games. Longest distance travelled by boat, definitely Wind Waker. Oh, he's God. just going around Again, all the time in that, in that bloody boat. That, that's a boring world, though. There's nothing to do in it. I got bored of that game. I, 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 I did it well. Maybe 10, 20, 30% possibly I got into it. And I was like, I love the fact that when I'm on the islands, I like the, the Zelda part of it. But the going around in a boat, just not interested. Assassin's Creed 4, that's a good example of a good game that's in a boat. In my experience, I mean, I'm not, a, you know, I'm not an Assassin's Creed fan, you know, after my Ubisoft rants, but at least Assassin's Creed 4 boat play is actually really fun and well done, and the battles are interesting. And even though it's repetitive, once you get into it and you figure out how to do things, it's still good. I still enjoy taking over a boat and killing all the pirates. And tell you, tell you a game um, with with very long tracks in it, um, a racing game, but the original Need for Speed. Um, it didn't really have tracks. I think there was one or two circuits, but the rest of them were open roads, and they were really long right. and quite pretty for the time as well. Well, talking about I, racing games, I probably spent more time in Mario Kart than any other game ever. The original <laughs> SNES Mario Kart, I played yeah, that yeah. so much. Yeah, so Nintendo. Much. Yeah, but Mario Kart was cool. It was. The RPG, yeah. sorry, I've never heard of that series. Uh, I did look it up, but I, I've not played any of them. I, I have a funny feeling it might not have got over to Europe. Yeah, potentially. I, I, yeah, he's he's talking about the uh, the tales of C series. Um, one of the guys in chat, and uh, the, I've I've heard of the, some of the games, but I haven't unfortunately played any. For example, tales <clears> of. Um, I can't remember what it was now. Tales um, of something. Tales of. Tales of Zillia. Oh, actually, I heard about that recently. Tales of the Abyss, Tales of Grace, and Tales of Symphonia. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, I haven't played any of them. I think I'm I've not... heard of Tales of Symphonia. But I've just... Tales of something. <laughs> um, yeah, I haven't yeah, got any in my Steam library now, so I haven't had any for free at any point from a. I think from a, from a purely like fact of miles travelled, it, it, nothing's going to be as much as elite. I mean, how much is in there? How much of, of the knowable universe is in there? Is it's it, the is, entire is it Milky galaxy? Way. It's the entire Milky Way to one to one scale. Fucking hell! <laughs> it is I mean, huge. That's cool and all, but is there really any need? If it's if it's all there, but there's nothing to do I'll there. You, I'll tell you the really cool thing is that when they when they discover new stars on new planetary systems, they add them to the game. For that real, is cool. it is very cool. 
Unless it happens as you're flying and it's just like, well, you know, inside the planet. <laughs> you're right. Just Josh. saw. I think the likelihood of anybody in that game being in the middle of where a planet is discovered is is extremely unlikely, though, isn't it? Do you get Do you get some sort of prize money for that? If that happens? <laughs> you should do. There's probably some you some win mode or something, isn't there? The Ender Planet. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it is the entire um, Milky Way galaxy and all of the stars in it. It's so, an impressive feat, no doubt. Are we getting to the point where we're flogging a dead horse now? Then are we? Uh... We're flogging a dead controller horse, yes. Yeah. So no one in chat's come up with anything interesting for Pressing this one LB either, really. To... Well, apart from oh. the Tales of um, series that uh, RPGs talked about. Uh, right. So yes, let's move on. Gaming news. It's our last section of the show before we close. Uh, generally, again, we just talk about things that we've seen, interesting stuff, new releases, anything that's come out. Unfortunately, I haven't had time this week to to really look through things and monitor Twitter and things like that because I've been so busy with uh, real life and real work. So, Lou and yes. Steve and Sam have, uh, can can lead this this match. So, so last week, um, I mentioned at the end of the show, we actually we were running out of time and we didn't get to cover it. But there's a game that I saw called Upsilon Circuit which is kind of a Diablo style game but it's got a really nice interesting twist and that's it it's got perma permadeath you can only play the game once so eight people play on a server and Whatever. they play ever you can't play again so eight people play at a time on a server and everyone else watches on Twitch and the Twitch audience decides what happens in the game so they'll they'll be able to spawn enemies and stuff like that or they'll be able to help players out who they they, they enjoy the look of right and when you die, one of the one of the audience gets to play. So it picks someone and they get to jump in and start playing, and then the audience cheers them on or tries to kill them off. So it kind of works like a game show and a, and a permadeath game. It's a it really reminds, cool idea. It sounds like a Running Man or something like that. <laughs> well, it is. A, yeah, it is a game. It's a game show basically, um, powered by Twitch. But I love the idea that you can oh. put people in the spotlight. Is it a Twitch players game then? Um, kind of, no, from what I, I've seen of it. Yeah, kind of. The Twitch audience can can control the game, um, but, but the they players also make, in the game actually control it properly. What I was reading about on the website, it, it, they also said that uh, the Twitch audience gets to choose how the, if a player uh, levels up or powers up and things mm. like that. So they get to you, normal decisions that you would make if you were building a character are actually in the hands of the audience. Part so game show, part action RPG, perma perma death. <laughs> yeah, perma perma death's excellent. I just I think it's a very nice idea. I think the, 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 there's there's a, an absolute need to get more gaming in the media in the West. There's loads of it over like um, in Korea and places like that. Hmm. Twitch is taken off in a big way for gaming, but but still, still it's still not very European central. It's focus, not, though, and is I it? think that's I think that's because. The players, you know, the professional gamers are usually not very interesting. The kind of <laughs> they're not That's though, a bit they? of a generalization. It's not. It's not interesting to watch because there's the it's same just kind not a of culture. skill. It's just not. A, it's a cultural That's... thing. I, I don't think it's necessarily anything to do with skill. I mean, we've got a lot of Europeans who are very good at playing games. It's not that. I think it's just that people, people in Europe, well. Again, I'm, I'm generalising here, but people in Europe maybe th still don't see games as a form of entertainment. They see it as something for kids. It's getting out of that slowly. As technology is growing and as casual games are becoming more uh, mainstream, you know, because they're, well, they're very, very mainstream now with all mobile uh, mobile stuff out there. But as that's happening, I think they're starting to accept it more. Maybe that's been, I don't know, bigger in America, bigger in Japan. It certainly has been bigger in Japan mobile gaming for many years. Mm. So, but yeah, I do think that's a very interesting concept. Uh, giving people, giving gamers a, a place in the spotlight and having the audience kind of decide what happens. It is, it is intriguing. The one thing that it, that idea is really interesting, but the actual game play itself that I saw looks like the, the permadeath thing isn't that bad because if you did, if you were successful. Unless it throws something else at you, that actual playing of that game will probably get quite boring. I just the game just... itself looks really bland, but the actual idea of the Twitch interaction makes it makes it, doesn't it? Yeah. The, the actual yeah. core game that you interacted with itself looks a bit dull. I could yeah, be it wrong, doesn't. Ha it doesn't but... have to be an amazing game, though, does it? <laughs> that's that's the uh, interesting thing. Is it? It, do it doesn't have to be a great game because you're only playing it for a short period of time. 
and it's the hype that drives it rather than the gameplay. And it's, I know it's weird, it's coming from a gamer to say that it's not the gameplay that's important in this, but it's kind of not. It's well, the performance of it. I like to think that I don't, I don't just want all of my games to be new and exciting and cool. I, I like different, I like innovation in games. I like things that are different, that are, that have got a, a twist, a new twist that's, that's different, you know, different from general normal gameplay, you know, jumping in, shooting people. I, I keep saying constantly that I'm, I'm sick of games where you just go in and kill people in a game and there's nothing more to it than that. I'm, I'm bored. I'm utterly bored of that. I need something more. I need something more cerebral. And this isn't particularly by the looks of it, no, but it's, no. at least it's a different idea, you know? Mm. Mm. I, I respect it for that. I think that's a genuinely interesting thing. It'd be interesting to see how successful it is. I mean, has it launched yet or is it still It's not. It's, um, it's still on the way. There's no release date for it as yet, but it's a, it's a kind of proof of concept, really. It could grow into something interesting as a, as a notion. Yeah, it could. I, I, like, I like the idea of it. It could go into other games. It'd be nice if there were other games, but if this is a start of something like that, it'd be well, nice to see whole, where uh, it goes. That's what the whole Twitch plays Pokemon thing was about, wasn't it? That I, people I never... on Twitch were... Well, they were, the idea was that people in the, in the chat or something were, were sort of saying, you go over here, you do this, this is the Pokemon you're going to use. It wasn't one player, it was everyone was the player. Yeah. I went into that's a not... few Twitch plays Pokemon channels and I didn't get what was going on, I've got to be honest, because there were so many people sending commands to it, but I didn't know which it ones... It averages them out, doesn't it? it basically, oh, right. that's the, 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 um, the Pokemon thing that started all off, basically. I think it took, it took days to get out the first room or something because everyone was sending commands to it. I think that's kind of the, the beauty of it that, it, that eventually the um, the crowd can work together to get the player out of the first room. Amazing. <laughs> I, 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 honestly, I, when I went in the channel, I sat there for 10 minutes and I, I watched streams and streams and streams of text and it didn't move. It just it just sat there and I was like, is it broken or is, is this what the game is? Are, are they waiting for something? I don't know what Pokemon plays like anyway because I haven't played it, but... Kind of like Zelda, isn't it? Like an old school Zelda. Never yeah, even looked it, at a it's video. Got, it's a top down isometric, and then you have random battle encounters, and it's turn based combat with your Pokemon fighting another Pokemon. Yeah, I played it on the um, Game Boy. Right. I played it. Yeah, I played it a bit on somebody else's Game Boy, and, and got like a bit bored of it quite quickly. Is but, there anything like Animal Crossing? I never played that. That's awful. Yeah, you, know, you know what you have to do in Animal Crossing. You basically cross animals. No, yeah, you, you, it, animal Crossing's a place, right? and you, oh. you basically—I'm not sure if you are an animal or you're a person—but you just go around talking to animals. That's it. It's like a Zelda game, like an old school Zelda game, and that's it. You just go up to one and talk to them and get their opinion on something, and then watch another person. And there didn't seem to be any quests in it or anything. But kids love it; absolutely love it. I might be wrong there. If okay. if someone in chat I've is heard uh, about it, but... if someone in chat knows better, please tell me. Um, I found a link this week, it's not necessarily um, news, but Steam Spy, I thought it was quite interesting, gives you statistics on all the games on Steam, and you can order it by different types of statistics, etc. So if somebody, for example, comes on the, uh, on the, on the show and starts saying, oh, my game sold this many, this many games, let's just have a look at what Fortress Craft sells, eh? Just, uh, just out of fun. If it works for Fortress Craft. It's not on there that I can see. No, it's not. Dope. There might be... What, sorry? I was just saying dough because I expected it to go wrong. Yeah, it's not on there. No. I think it only has like the, the, the highest selling games, maybe. Hmm, maybe. Top 100 games in the last two weeks by players. Gary's mod is still up there. That's amazing. Number four, Gary's mod still. But if you look <laughs> at the... If you order it by the different, uh, the different things, so we've got owners... Freestyle 2 Street Basketball is the top owned game. It's not, it's the lowest. Oh, it's the lowest, game. sorry, idiot. Dota 2 is the highest owned by Dota 2 is. <laughs> Twice as many as Team Fortress 2 because it's free. Portal 2 has got the best uh, meta score, followed Quite by right. Counter Strike. Uh, Team Fortress 2 is the cheapest <laughs> at free. In fact, that's pointless, isn't it? They're all free. Uh, Dota 2 has also got the most players. I, I really should play Dota, shouldn't I? Goat Simulator is the least, least played. By me uh, median playtime. Yeah. Yeah. Where Football, football Manager is football the most. Football Manager. 
The most. It's exactly. one of those games, though, isn't it? I mean, I don't know if you've ever played any manager type games. I'm not games. interested in my footballer's hamstring integrity. I'm not. I'm not talking about football manager specifically, but there's. I've, I've played a few manager type games over my over the years, and they, you get quite addicted to them, and you can spend quite a lot of time in them. But that, to me, that playtime median is quite low. I would have thought that would be quite a lot higher than that for these. And me, of this is median, though, isn't it? This is. This is. You know, that means that. Most people are playing it like a very long time. Th me Where I thought media. Oh god, median's the middle, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So that means it's. Oh, I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't understand median. Then obviously. Hang on, because I'm just a lowly just, programmer. This is me trying to remember secondary school math. Yeah. Which one? Which one was the one that was the true average? Was that mode? Uh, not median because me isn't median the slap bang middle number regardless of the, like the it could be the, it, most players could be playing it a lot longer but the middle number happens to be this like the median is kind of a, a bit of a crap statistic really as far as I'm I thought I mean yeah. I, I know I use average all the time and the average is add all, everything up and then divide it by the total simple yeah as that, exactly which is probably the best way to Look at statistics. The, the, the median is if you t if you have a list of numbers sorted in order, then it's the number in the middle of the set. Yeah. So the fact that's that rubbish. That then what is... what's that? What what's the, even their point in having that? Well, on there? it's a, it's easy to calculate in a large set. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> still rubbish. <laughs> but yeah, I can't believe Gary's mod's still up there. Um, at the, you know, considering a spell, especially it costs ten pound. But then again, when I played um, Murder the other week, I remember there's lots of different mods on Gary's mods mod. When I played Murder the other week, there was a lot of people playing it. The server was constantly full. I had to find a server that had spare space. So, is yeah. that the one that people are playing most of? What what in when you were playing Gary's mod, what was? What were people playing the most? There, there was another couple at the top. I can't remember what they were that they, they were constantly being populated. But the, the I was looking specifically for murder, so I didn't look at any other mods. I'm afraid I don't even know what else what? there is. Okay. But I, I think it's quite interesting that that that's up there still. Anyway, so yeah, I thought that was a cool little link I, d I just found out about this week, and uh, mm. just interesting to put out there. The Steam uh, Spy. Yes, Steam Spy. The. Um, they released, someone on YouTube released all of the Mortal Kombat 10, is it? We on 10 or 11? Or yeah, 15? Mortal Kombat X. X. Uh, fatalities <laughs> in 1080p, 60 FPS. Now, I watched... It's not all of the fatalities. It's all the fatalities that they've got so far. It's not all of the final ones in the game. I'm sure there's a little thing that says it's not every single one. Oh, right, okay. Well, either way, I, was, I watched them and it's, it's a fair length Funny. and it's ridiculous i didn't realize how graphic they were now <laughs> i didn't realize how a lot of them seem to consist of rip the center of the chest out and then split yeah. them in half though but yeah a lot of that honestly, the best one the best one's got to be that scorpion one where he like he slices someone's like head but just their face off so then they <laughs> fall over and you see their their, their, their tongue sort of go like, ah, ah, and then the brain just falls out of their head can, uh, oh, just brilliant. entrails everywhere it's brilliant yeah and it's it's ridiculous. I'm I'm amazed they don't get more complaints for the game. I've got to the, be honest the, with you. The bit that the, the thing that gets me is the fatalities. I can kind of go, well, that's the finishing move that kills them. It's the X-ray moves when they, when they zoom in to them, like literally breaking someone's spine in half, and then the f player falls down and goes, oh, and gets up again. It's like, no, you're dead. That move kills you. <laughs> <laughs> and they do like these X-ray moves where they zoom into them punching their skull. Completely I'm fractures. Just watching some of them. <laughs> just, like... <laughs> just punched him in the gut, and his, his rib cage just went. <laughs> <laughs> and then that takes off like quarter of his health, and he just gets back up again. Keeps fighting. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if they can explain it by saying there's some sort of weird thing where they can take the damage, but oh, it's, it's just it's just funny to me. I say someone. It's actually IGN that have posted it. So five five point eight million views. It's had ridiculous. <laughs> Damn right. I mean, I'm it not can't... into. <laughs> she just grabbed it... over someone's skull and then ripped his jaw off. Just for fun. <laughs> um, kind of make that kind of stuff. The fact that it's so ridiculously violent, <laughs> it makes me want to buy it. All the... <laughs> yeah, there's going to be a lot of that. <laughs> right, I'm sorry. I, I love the lengths that they've it. gone to with these. That's great. Oh dear. But uh, this is this is the, you know the guy last week we talked about the is it the director or the guy who uh, someone of Mortal Kombat X anyway left Twitter because his wife's get a wife and daughter's getting rape threats. 
Right. Um, what? Yeah, last week we were talking about it. The, well, the director or, or the creative director, I think, of Mortal Kombat 10, he's, um, he's left Twitter because his wife and his daughter are getting threats of, of rape and stuff. And oh, it's not very nice, but, you know, you're in the public eye. You're going to get that kind of stuff, especially if you... I don't know why, specifically. I don't know what they were referring to. I was like, it's so <laughs> it's so horrendous we, we're going to do this. I don't know. I don't get it. <laughs> I'm going to stop watching it now. It's just yeah. I need to stop watching it. I'm just, it's just morbidly funny. fascinated it is funny. by these shredding going on. Oh, yeah, they dear. are most amusing. So, so yeah, a game, a game I um, came across is a game called uh, The Last Night, which is a, a very very pretty um, side-scrolling platformer based on kind of the style of Flashback and Another World, hmm, with a kind of cyberpunk. Um, Blade uh, Runner, let's Blade just say Runner, yeah. Yeah, it, yeah, Blade Runner, very it, it Blade Runner the, the, the city looks like a combination between Blade Runner and the Neo Tokyo from Akira. That's what it mm. looks like, but I am all about that. That's that's great as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, I think that looks fantastic. I don't know that much about it. There's a Kickstarter coming soon. Um, it's developed by two brothers. It just it looks very nice. Um, it's certainly not early 2015, the Kickstarter, like it says on the website. Yeah, it's now past, into... yeah, it's past well, early. I guess so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, this is the thing with with indie devs, isn't it? You know, being one myself, it's it's hard to put dates and anything and keep to them. Yeah, but uh, I, th I think again, you're probably going to criticise me, Chris, but I just like the look of that game. Yeah, you and, you and your Moon Man. <laughs> I think it's very, very pretty. Yeah, well, Moon Man, Moon Man's doing well. That, that is a pretty game. I don't think Moon Man's a particularly pretty game. Yeah, well, I don't think you're a very pretty person. Yeah, don't care. That. But I have to be pretty <laughs> for you. <laughs> Your mum's not a pretty person. Yeah, for what they had the little uh, list of the of the gameplay stuff that they want to put in there, and it, it sounds cool. Like that. I like the ideas of it. Again, I've never really funded anything on Kickstarter, and I'm always a little bit iffy about funding a product. And I always feel like, so if I pay for the game to be made, do I have to buy a copy of it as well? I never really got out of that. Seems um, it to be depends a little on the bit funding unfair. level. Can, it, there's certain funding levels where you will get the product that they're offering usually I should bloody well hope so as well it's usually around the £30 mark for a game or the, if it's an indie game maybe a bit less but yeah depends reason. usually I mean actually no on Kickstarter it's usually a bit more than, than you would they would normally sell it for so, you know you usually get like early access indie games for about 10-15 quid depending on how much effort they're putting into it um, but if the Kickstarter's going it's usually about 30 quid because you, you, you know you're funding them as well as getting a copy of the game so they want, yeah. they want a bit more out of you for it I think Okay, who's uh, yeah. who's put this next link in the in the chat? Uh, I think that was one that I put in there. Yeah, the new trailer for Deus Ex: Mankind Divided. Uh, it is merely a you know like a CGI FMB trailer. It's not gameplay or anything. And from what they're showing in it as well, and I kind of hope that it doesn't go this direction, but it looks very much more uh, overt combat based rather than stealth based. Like the stuff, the, all the action in the trailer is Adam Jensen kicking the ever loving shit out of everything. Um, Do you know what I'm thinking when I'm watching this? Know. I'm thinking the original trailer for Assassin's Creed, which made that game out to be way better than it actually was when it came out. It's it's not an in-game trailer. I'm not interested. Sorry, yeah, it's it is just one of those trailers. But I thought it was interesting that they that they are going ahead with the sequel, which, given that you can kind of pick your ending to that game, is going to be one of two things are either going to do the mass effect thing when they go have you got a save file for the previous game or do you want it, to start fresh or they did the same with deus ex and deus ex 2 and basically they chose one of the endings oh okay. you. in the start of deus ex 2 is like you, a specific ending happened so that's probably what they'll do with this i'm just intrigued for them to carry on with it because i enjoyed that game if they can sort out the boss battles i'm, I'm in i'm totally in I don't mind that that trailer doesn't show you any gameplay. I think it does show a couple of the new augmented abilities that you're going to have. This That's is fine. This is what AAAs do. They don't give you gameplay. They 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 spend millions on producing these kind of videos to entice people to get them to you know get them to buy into the product, and then they start releasing gameplay trailers that are all pretty much staged eventually. And it's never the same when it releases. This is why I've stopped pre-ordering, and this is why I've stopped buying into. Triple A stuff, basically. Yeah. Rant, rant. No, I, I agree about all that. I merely brought it up because I didn't know that they were 
going full steam ahead with the sequel and they're now yeah it's a bullshit trailer but there is a trailer like it's it's happening you know what i mean so is this is this an actual an actual sequel to deus ex human revolution then it is yeah it's like yeah. two years after see i'm i'm already bought in because i really enjoyed that game i know you you didn't enjoy it lou but i i really enjoyed it i really I'm, liked it i'm a big fan of as long as they don't bloody do boss fights again but there's been so much criticism of that then they'll either not do it or they'll completely yeah, rejig how they do them yeah and give you different options and what how was to... what was the problem with the boss fights and but well, they were jarring they didn't fit the problem is is you, you 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 could play the entire game as stealth and then it forced you into fighting the bosses all right and yeah, the, when Sorry, go on. I'm going to say when when you did actually fight the bosses, you couldn't stealth it, you couldn't hide, you couldn't, you had to use all the weapons mm. to to kill them, and and there was no uh, non lethal option. Whereas when you play games like Metal Gear Solid and they force you into a boss fight, you usually have a stealth option with them, and you usually have a tranquilize option as well, so you don't have to kill them. Even in the original Deus Ex games, there was there was ways to kill people you would otherwise fight if you if you, like um, Herman, you could find his kill words. Yeah, and you could actually get him to you could just get him to blow up without having to fight him. Exactly, that's that's great. That's option. That's choice. That is what the metal. Yeah, that's it's what that the really well, well, no, that's what yeah. the Deus Ex universe is about. It's a well, the Deus Ex original games were all about choice, and mm. and that's what that's what draws me in as a fan. That's what I want to see in future games, and the fact that they did it in my eyes pretty well for the most of human revolution and then just shoehorned these boss fights in just because they thought they had to have boss fights in this is why dishonored is the perfect spiritual success to do Ex and thief and stuff it, they got it so right that game it is very very good um, um but why well, I, I was reading and i don't know if this it will affect i'm hoping that they'll learn the lessons when they're developing this new game that they actually outsourced the boss battles to a different dev company yeah there was one team working that. on the game and another team did the boss battles and you're like what part of you like whoever was in charge <laughs> of that decision thought that that would ever be a good idea like when i got to the first boss battle in, in human revolution i'd gone through the first level with like a tranquilizer pistol and nothing else i got to this boss fight i'm like what the hell do i do here like i was completely not ready for him and i, I had to sort of think i had to reload and, and like gear up a little bit for a boss battle that i didn't know was going to happen or that i didn't know was going to happen that i couldn't just use my tranquilizer thing and my other stuff that I had because I'd stealth through the whole level really ridiculously then got to a shitty boss fight that I couldn't even damage him it was ridiculous annoying mm. but yeah I yeah, hope that, that I that really hope that they, if they fix that but keep you know the story and the everything and the, the exploration and all that stuff and the cool level design that they had I'm, I'm totally up for it I'd still and now we every time we talk about Deus Ex I am that mem that goes around the internet I want to play Beam. it again now shut up I, I I am I am literally going to install it and play it again this week because I love it. I love the original. Although I can't actually, I tried it a few weeks ago, didn't I? And it still had some problems with it. Um, I can probably help you with that. It drags oh, yeah. my computer down to the ground, but then again, I've got my new graphics card, so that'll make it, it even that worse won't help. probably. Yeah. Won't help. <laughs> yeah. What's five, uh, nights, fri five Nights at Freddy's then? Oh, do you not even know what it is? Right. So the the new the next news story is that. Uh, the a little indie horror game Five Nights at Freddy's has gotten a movie deal from Warner Brothers. Uh, right. Now, for, for those of you that don't know, it hard to describe. Five Nights at Freddy's is one of those. Um, it's a it's a horror game that basically is, you're a security man sat in the security room in a in a sort of a Chuck E. Cheese, you know, the animatronic like, oh, it's your birthday, bunny rabbits and that, doing weird, creepy animatronic stuff. Yeah, you're a, you're a night watchman in there, and you're literally sat in a in a room with security cameras, and you're watching. <laughs> And you get told that the animatronic figures come to life at night and get up to mischief. And you basically have to stop them from getting to you in a room. And it's really weird that like you have a the door needs power to stay closed. So in order to do it, you have to use power and the power runs out and you've got to decide when to close the door so that the guys can't come in. When they get you, you get a <laughs> jump scare. Like a thing comes at the screen and scares you. You <laughs> die after they start again. So it's one of those like quite, you know, quite basic indie games that's taken up a following because a lot of YouTubers like your PewDiePie's have screamed at it for five hours and got millions and billions of views and it's become really popular right. through those kind of avenues so Warner Brothers have picked it up and I think they're also the people making the Minecraft movie so they've obviously got their finger in it in the computer game pies but I mean 
it kind of fits for modern Hollywood because most of their films, horror films, are just shitty jump scare things. Yeah. So that could totally work. I thought it was interesting that a game like that, that's so small that you know, plugged in dudes such as Chris hasn't haven't even heard of it, is getting a movie. Really? Never said I was plugged in. I just there's some <laughs> indie games I've heard of that I like. <laughs> uh, speaking that's of one those indie games that crossed over into being kind of mainstream, that it's become pretty big. I've I've heard I've heard Five Nights at Freddy's before, but I've never really. I just assumed it was a horror film, but obviously not. It's quite cool, but it will be now. In fact, um, I, someone in chat, uh, Potatoes, just uh, said, "Have you looked at Unepic?" And there's something that, that now. Something that I I looked at a good while ago. It's a Steam uh, game that was released a while back, but it's it's a kind of tongue in cheek story about this guy who is a Dungeon and Dragons freak, but it just ends up being you know, this epic under a ridiculously epic quest that he goes on and it's just like a side scroller you create all your own uh, magic and uh, and stuff and it, it looks really good and i kind of want to have a go of it uh, it's only 10 quid and i, I keep meaning to <laughs> it's two quid on uh kingwin yeah we don't say the dirty word on the stream <laughs> <laughs> sorry but yeah it's uh, it's been out for a while i believe 25th of july 2014 so it's been out a fair while now but it's one of those that i've uh, i've had my eye on it's on my wish list in fact but i haven't yet purchased is he giving it a, a seal of approval there as he just said if you, if, you, if you tried it i don't know i don't know why he mentioned it to be fair but it's something that i have seen it's on my wish list and i've been kind of looking at uh, looking at getting for a while right so the last news story uh yeah the last one is something that i just saw today actually which is i that, heard about um, this on the news yesterday actually Fancy battery technology, basically they've invented a battery made of aluminium which charges, it can fully charge it in a minute. Yeah, and this is the future. This is, this, is a, this is one of those advancements that when it becomes commercial will be amazing, I think. The thing, the thing is that the batteries have lagged way behind the technology for a long time now. We've got mobile phones which we have to charge twice a day. Hmm. You know, my, my phone is on like 10% by the time I get home. Uh, so mine's, mine's pretty good, but I do turn off a lot of stuff on my phone when I'm, I've got profiles on it to turn off well, GPS. I'm using an iPhone, so I can't turn anything off. But uh, it's it's going to be nice to see this stuff. It's going to basically, I think this will really open up the mobile market more, um, and the wearables as well. Yeah, well, wearables are becoming fairly popular now, but I still think at the moment that's kind of a trend rather than a, you know, a full on. I like. Mobile phones are actually quite useful, but these wearables are just kind of extensions of mobile phones that make it make it a little bit more convenient to look at data than putting your hand in your pocket and getting your mobile phone out and looking at it and unlocking it. You can just look at a watch and go, right, that's what the weather's like. Oh, that's the time. Oh, that's my pulse. Mm. <laughs> That level of convenience is surely enough for some people. Wasn't uh, wasn't Will I Am one of those Burks that was like oh, talking about it? Will they, uh, Will can uh, fuck off. That's what he can't. <laughs> he, I, what a bell end. What a bell will, end. <laughs> will I Am a massive dick? <laughs> yeah. Um, um, but, uh, so yeah, yeah. I, th I think that's quite interesting. One more thing. I just f I just remembered seeing this. And it was a VR thing that and wearables. Um, there's something called Wearality Sky, which is a, a new type of um, VR headset, which is basically just a pair of glasses that you stick a phone into. But it's been engineered in such a way that it's really lightweight and really gives you like a really wide field of view. This is on Kickstarter at the moment. This, again, looks quite interesting. It looks interesting because it gets rid of that stupid, massive helmet thing that is a big problem with VR at the moment. Uh, so with, hang on, what's what 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 is this? Tell me again. So it's a pair of glasses with special lenses in it that yeah. have been like um, specially made by um, by a um, what is it? Uh, Lockheed Martin, so big aeronautics company. And you basically it'll fit any five or six inch screen phone in it in the holder. All you right. can run a VR app on it, and it basically fills your field of view with the VR from the phone. So it's kind of like the Gear VR for Samsung, only it works with any phone. You just have the have the right app on the phone. Right. Looks very interesting. It's very cheap as well. Um, you know, you can you can pay fifty dollars, pledge fifty dollars, and get a unit. So when's that's kind of the. When's it due out? I mean, I'm not um, going to go for it, but. Well, October two thousand fifteen is the delivery date for the Kickstarter. If it if it goes, um, it's already um, a quarter of the way there with twenty seven days to go. 
does look very interesting as, a, as an entry point into VR if you can pay 30 quid for a VR headset I suppose, and use your yeah. own phone. What's the gear VR price at then? Um, I don't know exactly. I think it's it's certainly over 100, uh, 100 pounds. I think it's because it's um, there's, there's quite a bit of tech inside the, the gear VR as well as the phone. Still, it's still something you have to attach to your face. And and the other problem with the Gear VR is it only use you're going to use it one phone with it, the Samsung Galaxy Note. One one of them, I can't remember which one exactly. Uh, whereas this one will fit any phone with the right. five or six inch screen. I think this is quite interesting. Definitely worth a look. I'm I'm not bought into it yet. I'm a VR skeptic. I know. I still think I still think it's too cumbersome. But I think. If you can pay thirty quid to get into VR, that's goes some way towards allowing people to try it out. At I, least. I said, I don't get me wrong. Whenever I do say that I'm not into VR, I do. I did enjoy. I do the, enjoy the experience when I try it. It's just commercially, I just don't see it. I just don't see it being popular, even in this day and age. You know, people want VR, but people won't. They'll be like three D bloody glasses. People can't be asked to charge the 3D glasses up every five minutes. I wouldn't be asked to have to plug in my virtual reality headset and every time I need to play a game with it and then configure it all and get it all working. If it gets to a point where that isn't the case and it's just like another monitor and it just works, cool. Up for that. <clears throat> Maybe. If I don't have to put it on my face. But then you probably <laughs> will have to put it on your face because it's VR. Yeah. And you kind of need your eyes. There's also part of the VR experience. Oh, are they? Right, yeah. right. So, they also, to be on also it's not accessible to blind people. That's not. I'm not on with that. That's, that's racist. That's, that's racist. <laughs> <sighs> anyway. Yes, anyway. Let's move on to the close of the show. Yes. So thank you very much for everybody who watched today. Thank you very much for the donations. So said that's the first time. I think we've got seven pounds today. It's been seven pounds. Amazing. Oh, well, we unless I missed some. Seven things for we a could, pound. We could buy like a, a six and a half, no, four and a half cream eggs. Oh, it's in, it, it, you know the value of cream eggs is all that matters. Well, now. we could we could have a cream egg each, and then we could uh, we could give another one away as a as a prize. As, as a prize to the highest donator. Yeah, we could you give us seven yeah. quid, and you get a cream egg back. Well, obviously, there's going to be the costs post. taken off that as well. So you know, there's, there's oh, like... packaging. You know. We oh, could no, buy there's... a round eleven IKEA hot dogs. That's awesome. What? How, how much IKEA hot dogs? Sixty-five p. What, what are they made out of? <laughs> I would. Yeah, so the, 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 the unused bits of the furniture. <laughs> Um, so yes, oh, no. In all seriousness, though, thank you very much. We we thank you. we never expected any anything, and you know, so we've we've had a donation link up for for quite a while, um, mainly because we were doing some charity shows before, uh, and it's it's very much appreciated. Thank you. Um, we will be using any money that we do get to do something for the show at some oh, point, but seven pounds, yeah. you know, it's it's appreciated, but it's not really enough to do anything with at the moment. We'll, we shall keep a tally and uh, maybe do a giveaway at some point potentially. Maybe figure figure some out. Um, so yes, uh, thank you very much. If you're interested in anything we do, we are on YouTube.com forward slash Residence Arcade, Twitter.com forward slash Residence Arcade, Facebook.com forward slash Residence Arcade, and everything YouTube. else. YouTube. I just said YouTube. That was the first oh, thing I said. Oh, sorry. And you can also go to residencearcade.com. Yes, residencearcade.com. Find it all there. Yeah. Um, and we're also, we're, we also stream on hitbox.tv as well, forward slash residencearcade. Luckily, we have got the same URL for everything. So uh, we've been very lucky. I think it's a very unique name, isn't it? Um, also, one thing that we failed to mention, Lou and I, not next weekend, but the weekend after, are doing a game jam. And we're doing a game jam together. We are doing Ludum Dare, no We're doing Dare. L L L Ludum Dare. Whatever you want to call it. However you pronounce it. We yeah. don't know how to pronounce it, but we'll make games for it. Yeah. And or a uh, game. We've already got some little ideas that we're uh, we're throwing between each other, but we obviously we have to wait for the announcement of the theme before we can really do anything. But, um, yeah, we, we, we might stream it live depending on how we feel. If it's too hot in here, we might not because we'll we don't want, like, eight computers running. Um but yeah, it's we're doing the the jam. Obviously, we can't do the, the full Ludum Dare competition because you you can only do it as an individual. So we're doing the jam. Lou's going to be basically providing assets, helping with the game design, doing maybe a bit of code. But I'm going to be mainly concentrating on the code and telling Lou what to do. 
tell him telling me to draw the skeleton better. Yes. Because there are going to be skeletons in this there game. I don't care skeletons. what the theme is. I don't care if the theme is no skeletons. We are having skeletons. <laughs> yeah, if it's no skeletons, we should have a skeleton background. We should then have skeleton <laughs> skeleton font made out skeleton. of bones. Yeah. And then Bone everything font. in the game world is made out of bones. Like tables, <laughs> we could have, chairs, lamps, we could have, doors, um, and bones. We could have what's his face, Hugh Laurie in there somewhere. He's in Bones, isn't he? No, Bones. No, he's Doctor House, isn't Doctor he? Doctor House. Yeah. What's Bones, Bones was, then? Bones was the Bones was the guy from Angel, wasn't it? David Boreanaz. Was it? Oh, I never watched yeah, it. it. I just from Star Trek. But anyway, Bones, is, Bones is Star Trek. So yes, I'm a Doctor, not a whatever the thing is. <laughs> watch the, watch this space for uh, for you know announcements etc. We usually update Twitter more than anything else. Although at the moment, I said I'm quite busy, so I'm not getting as much uh, as much publicity as normal. Uh, we also do a Metal Gear Solid stream. Hopefully this week, we might get to finish Metal Gear Solid 3. It's been on hold for about six weeks. If Lou, if Sam's up for it. When, when do you think they're doing it? Monday night. I only, oh, next week, you mean, sorry. Yeah. Oh, sorry, next week, yeah. Uh, I'm up for it if I'm not working a lot. Okay. Right, so let us sorry, know. The reason we haven't been able to finish that is that uh, I've recently moved and had internet problems and been working and, and had internet had problems Monday before that stuff. yeah so we got to a point with it and stop it's not that we've given up on it we just i haven't been available and chris doesn't want to finish it without me no no i do i actually suggested it to lou and steve and they both went no 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 so to be fair, you, you could do if you wanted to just get it done just do it without me well, I, it's the final to be fair and plus i want you to witter on about the boss fight at the end because i don't know anything about it and I, I know it's quite a poignant moment in metal gear solid history it's quite a quite a thing isn't it okay right so yeah. um on top of that as well uh 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 we we we're always looking for guests for this show as well now somebody suggested a guest earlier on in the show uh, i can't remember who it was or where it was i'll have a look through the chat but if anybody who's watching is talkative has opinions about games and is interested in coming on then please let us know we will do our best to schedule schedule you in. We are live. Gabe, Gabe Newell, you're always welcome. Gabe, Thanks. if you want to come on, that's fine. We will not threaten to kill you. Not unless we uh, um, are joking, of course. But we don't. None of us have any Steam Steam accounts or st games on Steam yet. So I think we're okay there. Um, and all of our all of our episodes and gameplay are always uploaded to YouTube. So thank you very much again for watching, and we shall catch you next week on well monday or wednesday next week see you later see you later